Alrighty then, my name is Milo and welcome to the new Game Maker Studio tutorial. Today I will tell you how to work with scripts. Uh, think of a script as a, uh, a compilation of codes and functions which you need to perform repetitively, but uh, you don't want to write out that code multiple times if you need to execute it multiple times. Uh, so f say for example you have three different variables and you need all of them to pass through a certain number of uh, algorithms and uh, calculations. Well, you can either write down that calculation every s for every single variable or you could uh, create a script which will just take in the values that you send into it and it will return uh, you a result. Okay, so let's uh, have an actual demonstration. I have a room with nothing in it. Let's create an object. I'm gonna call it obj underscore test. I'm gonna save the object and right off the bat, I'm gonna drop that object into the room. All right, so there's nothing but the object. Now, I'm gonna get that object uh, and inside I'm going to add a draw event and I'm gonna drop the script in there and I'm gonna draw text and I'm gonna draw it at the coordinates of the object and the variable that we're gonna draw is called result, just so that we could have something to draw. Now, um, I'm gonna have a create event, and I'm gonna add a script. Now, we need some numbers. Let's say num1, num2, and result. Num1 will be equals to, say, three. Num2 will be equals to seven, and result will be equals to zero, just so that we could declare it. Um, now, say you need to multiply num1 by num2. Normally it'd go result equals num1 multiplied by num2. You compile that and you're getting it 21 printed on the screen. Okay, so that works. But what if you have something uh, that's a bit more complex? Well, this is where the scripts come in handy. Uh, the function to call up a script uh, any script that you've created is script underscore execute. Now, if you have the code suggestion enabled, it will tell you all the arguments for that script. And unlike all the other all the other arguments, it's going to say index and it's going to say argument zero, argument one, yada yada yada. This goes up to argument fifteen. This means that into a single script, you are able to send up to fifteen variables to work with. Uh, so this is very handy. Right now, uh, I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to open and close the brackets. Um, before I'm going to tap into anything else, I'm going to create the script. So I'm going to right click on the scripts folder and create our script. Uh, now, if only GameMaker would not be a troublemaker. All right, so we created a script. And uh, let's name a script with a prefix scr underscore script. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, so, we've created that script. I'm going to save it. And back in the main creation code of the object, we're going to write the index of the script we've just created. So, scr underscore script. There we go. It's nice and blue so you can tell the difference. Now, we need to send two variables. So we're gonna send number one, or num1 and num2 variables. And all you have to do is you have um, a comma and you write in the value that you wanna send. So num1, num2. So these two values will be sent into the script. Great, so all you have to do is open the script and now you need to somehow retrieve those values that you've just sent. And you do it with a function called argument. And this is a script only uh, arg um, function. Uh, and what it does is it takes uh, the, the number that you put in at the end of the argument uh, and it uh, takes in the value that's assigned to it. So this right here would be argument zero, this would be argument one. Now, one important thing that I need to add is that you can write this function in two separate ways. You can either say argument zero is a single word, or you can say argument, you can open and close square brackets and inside is the number of the argument that you're retrieving. Now keep in mind, within a single script you can only use one of these formats. 
Uh, if you use both of them, the script will not work. It will take a look at the first uh, format and it will assume that all your other arguments are uh, written in the same way. Okay, so uh, what you need to do is you need to multiply uh, argument 0 and argument 1, which is value uh, 1 and, and the first value and the second value. You can really just uh, either create a variable like um, result num whatever equals and it's going to be um, equal to argument 0 multiplied by argument 1. There we go. So this will contain the multiplication of the two values. Now you need to return the value back. And you do that by typing return, open and close brackets, and type in the name of the, the variable that contains the result. Now this will effectively return the same multiplication that we did earlier. There we go. Uh, returns 21. Now what if it's something else? We could uh, add up the values. So now instead of 21 it should return 10. There we go. So the script works. Um, when it's a simple script you can get away with not even using a custom variable to store your result. You can just take in the arguments and uh, work with them directly. You just say return open and close brackets and inside you do your calculations. Um, if you have a more complex script you would probably want to use some variables to store in your results. There you go. Works just as well. Now um, this works fine but what if you have something more complex? Well I'm going to give you a practical example of how I'm using the scripts in the current project. Um, I have a, a transition that I wanted to make for one of my games and that transition is uh, something like a standard uh, cartoony uh, circles fading the screen. So what that looks like is um, it's it's a uh, the screen is the the screen is divided in a grid of 10 by 7 and what happens is one player goes into the uh, the teleporter and then the second player goes into the teleporter and once they stop, they fade in and the transition takes place and the next room is now open. Okay, so obviously I'm just using the draw event uh, in it. And obviously I could just go, I would just go uh, draw circle and I would say it's position X, Y. Um, and I'm going to say whatever variable is, in, is increasing the radius. Um, of the the circle so rad and outline would be zero so that would be my first circle um, and I would say okay well now I need you know I need a grid of 10 by 7 of those so y uh, I'm gonna displace y by let's say 32 pixels and yada 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 and I'd have to make um, I'd have to make 70 of those. So it's a grid of 10 by 7. So obviously I'm going to have 70 of those. It's going to take a while uh, to draw all this out. So this is where a script comes in. Uh, in my project, what I did is I created a script that drew out a single row of those circles. I could make another script that draws each circle with a displacement, but I think that's kind of becoming a script inception. Um, so I'm actually using another script within a script to uh, to perform a task which I'm actually going to show you in a second. So I have a script that draws a single row so I'm displacing the x value by an amount and it draws out a single row and then I have the object uh, the object that creates the fade effect it uh, uses seven uh, of these scripts and uh, with each next script it displaces the Y coordinate by 30 uh, pixels and that's how you get that fade in effect and obviously I did the re uh, reverse for the fade out effect uh, so that it wouldn't look like the same fade in fade out it would just look a little bit uh, well the fade would start from a different angle okay so that's good um, now 
let's say uh, we need I'm gonna give you another example on the scripts uh, let's say I want to have three numbers side by side first number second number third number and I want the first number to start uh, all the three numbers will start at zero and I want the first number to start rising then moments later I want the second number to start rising and then moments later I want to have a third number to start rising so I would have draw text uh, x y and let's say result I'm gonna copy that I'm gonna put it uh, in three times the first one the, the the second one will be in the middle the first one will be displaced left 60 pixels and the other one will be displaced right 60 pixels so obviously I could have three variables result one result two and result three and I would have to increase them uh, all on their own uh, and I would basically say if result one reaches a certain number start increasing for result two and when result two uh, reaches a certain number start increasing result three yes you could do that but there's a much simpler way uh, logically to perform that task so I'm gonna compile this and check out uh, what we have all right so we have the three numbers drawn out so that's good now I am going to go into the create events and I'm just gonna go ahead um, let me actually save the object right here let me save it and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the create event and I'm gonna delete the script uh, so that result will stay at zero I'm gonna compile that Good, checking up, we're all, uh, we're all at zero. In the draw event, I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna say result plus equals one. That compiles. All right, so our numbers are starting to increase. Now, they're all increasing at the same time and they're all the exact same number. So uh, let's say result one will start increasing first the second result will be minus 50 and the third result will be minus 100 so that they wouldn't be the same number. Okay, so they're not the same number but again it goes into the negative number and that's not what I want. I want it to start at zero. So let's make a script that says if result or result minus 50 or result minus 100 whatever it is if it's below zero make it zero so we're gonna create uh, we're gonna go into our script and we're gonna delete the previously written script here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna say if open close brackets and I'm gonna say argument zero so that's the first argument that we're sending if argument zero is below zero then we're gonna return we're gonna return zero else and else basically says if argument is no longer below zero or it's equals to zero then we're gonna return there we go return open close brackets argument zero okay so that should do the trick I'm gonna save it and now I'm gonna say script execute and scr script is the prefix and uh, comma we only sending one argument so we're gonna send the R the value of result I'm gonna copy this thing and I'm gonna before drawing the variable result I'm gonna pass it through the script so we got result as a regular number then we have result minus 50 and now finally we have result minus 100 and that should do the trick all right there you go first number second number and third number 
So now you can see how these scripts come in handy because if I wanted to, to program this on my own, I would have had to have three result variables and I would have to have conditions uh, such as, for example, if result one is above 50, only then I would have to have result two plus equals one. And I'd have to do it for the second one and for the third one. And, uh, you know, obviously we've made a shortcut. Now, there are way more complex ways you can use these scripts. Uh